a stylized space bar, strong onboard firmware, and a 60% layout? It looks like Corsair's copying somebody else's homework. I'm <coughs> joking, one too many. <clears throat> The Corsair K65 RGB Mini finally launched from Corsair as a way to compete with all the other 60% keyboards on the market. Some of those include the Ducky 1-2 Mini, the Razer Huntsman Mini, and the newest edition, the HyperX Alloy Origin 60%. And now we got this. features that really breaks it away from the pack such as the 8000 Hz hyper polling rate and strong firmware and software there's a lot more to this than meets the eye as Corsair's first 60% keyboard, we'll see how it stacks up against its competition. The keyboard comes with a plastic dust cover, a braided detachable USB-C cable, and a plastic keycap puller, but ditch that thing right away because it's gonna scratch up your keycaps. There's also an extra space bar, we'll talk about that later. This keyboard comes in a very compact 60% layout. It's not going to take much room on your desk at all, but it has all the functions of a full-size keyboard and more. More. Looking at the case design, this keyboard looks oddly familiar. And I'm not talking about Ducky here. Check this video out here if you want to see exactly what I'm talking about. The keyboard itself has a center mounted USB-C port and it's not recessed at all so it's going to fit a lot of your custom cables. On the back, there's four small rubber feet and it's more slippery than I would have liked. Corsair could have done a better job here if these feet were bigger or thicker or if they just added more along the backside so that during those intense gaming sessions, your board's not going to be sliding around. There's also no kickstands here at all so you're pretty much stuck with whatever angle the keyboard offers you and that's a pretty standard one so no complaints there but I definitely would have liked to see some wow factor with these kickstands. The case itself of course is all plastic it's built pretty sturdily and there's no flex to it when you're trying to bend your keyboard it'll probably survive a few drops here and there. On the right side of the USB-C port there's also Corsair branding here and it's pretty glossy but subtle overall. Nothing about this keyboard screams Corsair in your face. So it would have been really nice if there was something special about this case, something that makes it different, but overall they did a pretty good job for it being their first 60% keyboard. The plate behind the keycaps is white, which allows the RGB to pop out a lot more, but without any light on, it just looks awkward and a little bit out of place. These keycaps remind me a lot of the Ducky 1-2 Mini's keycaps. It's OEM profile, it's double shot, PBT, it's shine through, and it's got a bunch of side printed secondary legends pretty much on every keycap. These keycaps remind me a lot of the Ducky 1-2 Mini. Their OEM profile, their high quality double shot PBT plastic, no oil or shine here, at least for several years. The RGB shines really well through them and they're all black. Unlike the Ducky 1-2 Mini, we don't get the additional colored keycaps, but one thing we do get is a choice between an all black space bar or this radiant triangle disintegration pattern that looks absolutely amazing with the RGB turned on. The legends in the font here is pretty clean and it doesn't remind me of that early 2010s gamer font like a lot of gaming keyboards that we've seen recently. The sub legends here is where the keyboard gets really interesting and they're side printed on each keycap. It really shows us how powerful this firmware is without having the software open. The switches on this keyboard are Cherry MX Silvers that have a lower actuation distance for that quick response time in gaming. And Cherry MX Silvers feel really satisfying to use and they're not fatiguing at all with long gaming sessions. It's always a safe option. One thing I'm curious about is why did Corsair opt for MX Silvers rather than their new OPX optical switches since those feel pretty smooth and actually even faster. Paired along with its 8000 Hz pulling rate, I feel like that would have been the better option here. The switches however are soldered to the board and that would make doing aftermarket mods pretty difficult, but this keyboard really doesn't need it in the first place. One problem though is there is a lot of spring ping, but the stabilizers sound pretty dang decent. In my experience, Corsair's had 
historically pretty bad stabilizers, especially on their K70 and K95. However, with their latest upgrades on their K100 and this one, the K65, the stabilizers are actually pretty decent to game and type on. They're not pre-lubed, but you can expect a pretty nice sounding performance. The onboard firmware of this keyboard rivals the Ducky 1 2 Mini, 100%. Almost every single key on here has a function and a secondary layer. It makes it overwhelming, but it also makes it seem like this keyboard can do a whole heck of a lot while being a lot smaller too. At a glance, here's what you can do with these secondary functions. You can change between lighting presets, change lighting brightness, switch between profiles, record macros, use windows lock, scroll lock, and caps lock. It's got full mouse functionality you can access lower layer media keys, use arrow keys, and more. It's nice to see Corsair taking their firmware seriously with this board since that's something that I see a lot of manufacturers overlook. Now the software here with the K65 Mini is where this board starts to surpass the Ducky 1 2 Mini and actually a lot of other 60% keyboards out there. You can change things on this keyboard's onboard memory, but you can also change more things with IQ Open as well if that's something that you would prefer. I had some issues remapping some of these keys. The software is still in its early phases when I was testing it, so I expect all those issues to be fully flushed out when this keyboard is released fully. Along with the macros, key mappings, and all that good stuff, you can also change the polling rate of this board up to 8000 hertz. An 8000 hertz polling rate is eight times faster than the usual mechanical keyboard that you're probably using, so Corsair is really trying to push the limits of this board. Overall, the Corsair K65 Mini is a really good option if you're into gaming, but you're also not willing to sacrifice any of that functionality, especially in the software. With Cherry Max Silver Switches, the powerful software and the 8000Hz polling rate, it's actually really hard to pass it up if you're interested in that compact size. This mix of powerful firmware and software is what's been missing from a lot of keyboards in this 60% space. However, compared to the Ducky 1 2 Mini, this board does lack in a few areas. The overall build of the K65 Mini just feels really bland. It's all black, there's no kickstands, it's slippery, there's just nothing about it that screams wow. While you do get this awesome stylish spacebar, you don't get the additional colored keycaps that makes your board really stand out. So yeah, the K65 RGB Mini isn't a bad option at all. A lot of people probably will find this overpriced for what you get, and nothing about the board really screams you gotta buy me. If you're interested in the Corsair RGB Mini, you can check out the link down below where it will localize to your area so you don't have to spend a ton of time searching around. And if you enjoy content like this and want to support us and keep making more content, feel free to check out our Patreon page. There's a lot of perks there and things that I'm working on behind the scenes as well. Check that out, and if you can't afford to support us, that's okay. Feel free to join our Discord server where there's a bunch of helpful people and it's a great community overall. And thank you to our patrons for making this all possible. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! And nothing about this board really just screams, buy me, buy me, or just screams, buy me, buy me, buy me, buy me. You should buy me. This keyboard says buy. Buy me. This keyboard says buy me, but it doesn't. Nothing about this keyboard says buy me. You should buy this keyboard. You should buy the keyboard. Okay, we're, this is weird now. <laughs>